Steve Jobs was amazingly good at enforcing the rules of simplicity. So I spent, well, you'll see, I spent some uh, time in my life working with Steve Jobs that sort of changed my whole outlook on things. But, so I worked with him for a total of 12 years. Um, and as you know, you've heard the stories about what a rough character Steve could be. And I'm here to confirm those stories. <laughs> um, but delighted to say that over 12 years time, he only beat me up twice. Um, and these were not physical beatings. I might even been able to take him on, actually. He wasn't that strong a guy. Um, but they were verbal beatings, and they, will, they were both things I will never, ever forget. I've never seen a human being so mad as he could get. But you understood that that was working with Steve. Steve Jobs was special in that he didn't really like advertising that sounds like advertising. He, was, he wanted to just communicate what Apple was all about. And I've worked with many companies, you know, the, I showed you some of them, Intel, Dell, BMW, IBM. But Dell has 26 distinct models of laptops, not just screen sizes, I'm talking about different computers for home, business, education, government. HP, not to be outdone, has 41 distinct models. And poor little Apple has but three. Well, poor little Apple never has more than 10% of the market share, but share of profit, total profit available in any category, Apple has a greater profit share of the PC category than Dell and HB combined. Every single ad we did had to end logically with Think Different. That's, that was how we focused everything Apple did. So eight months after we started the Think Different campaign, that computer looking like that, in a world of beige, boxy, boring computers, it looked like that. So when all we really had to do is put the, a photo of the computer on the page at that point and say, think different. And all those months of advertising suddenly made even more sense that Apple was doing things that were not what you see every day. Apple made over 20 distinct products, not just laptops and desktops, but they had Newtons, printers, scanners, cameras. They had all these products that were all pretty mediocre. Uh, so when Steve came along, he did one thing that I think is the most important thing he ever did for Apple, even though he did many, many things in later years that made Apple what it is today. But at this point in time, he stood on stage uh, right after he introduced the iMac, and he said, today we are killing every product that Apple makes except for two. And from now on, we're going to be a very different company. And this was the... the the most brazen act of simplification I, I think the world has ever seen in business and probably ever will see. He said, from now on, we're only gonna make four things, a home and a pro version of a desktop and a laptop. The idea of the Think Different campaign was that if you tell somebody who you admire, that says something about you. So our job was to tell the world who Apple admires and that would say something about Apple. So every couple of weeks, we'd have a meeting and we'd try to you know, come up with some new people because we had something like 75 different Think Different personalities over the course of the campaign. And we'd put them on the table and we would discuss who we should use, who we shouldn't use. And one week, Steve came into the room with the idea of Nelson Mandela. He was a huge fan of Nelson Mandela who was at that time still the president of South Africa, had three more months to go on his term. He had already announced his retirement, but he was still the leader. And he said, I want to use Nelson Mandela in our you know, sides of buildings, think different, Nelson Mandela. So we were like, that's a tough one, Steve, but you know, we'll check. So we checked with Nelson's people, and they said, no way in hell, click. <laughs> um, so I, told, I reported back to Steve, and um, he said, well, you think I should talk to Bill Clinton about it? But it's hard for me to believe that the President of the United States called up the Nelson Mandela people and said, you know, would you mind having your, your guy uh, be in an ad for one of my friends? <laughs> the sitting President of the US. So uh, it would have been scandalous if anyone really knew that that had happened.